You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Queen Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it, guys. The last episode was a ooh, a little bit lewd. So uh, I'll maybe this episode will have some. Uh, <laughs> we'll have some something special for us. Anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy, and let's just jump right back into it. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Without warning, Roderick swings his wooden sword towards me. It was a horizontal slash, so I tried to block it by placing the sword vertically to my right. But it's no use, as he easily disarmed me by hitting the tip of my weapon, and then carrying on until my own right arm stopped the hit. I hiss and grunt loudly, as I feel like my arm may fall down at any moment. Be quicker. You need to react. Don't think. Easy for him to say. He's not the one getting his ass beat. Despite the pain, I ready myself for up, up for his next attack, which comes faster than I expected and has the same exact as the exact same result as the previous one. Damn. Hit after hit after hit. Roger comes to continues his class until I eventually manage to pick up his pace, blocking most of the hits. Luckily for me, he does stop when he notices that I blocked properly because I'm pretty sure that he could easily break my defense if he tried to. Before I notice, a few hours pass us by. We spent the entire afternoon training, and or what he considers as training. I see it more as a beating. Although, to be honest, I learned a thing or two. That'll be good enough for now. You're dismissed, runt. The knight finally relaxes his stance, throwing his sword to the side. I watch him walk all the way to one of the benches, sitting there with a loud thud. For real? He raises his eyebrow and looks back at me, silently asking me if I wanted to continue with the abuse. To what I silently deny with my with the head. Just as he says that I drop to the ground. My legs feel like noodles as my and my arms are about to give up. I look up to the red sky, breathing heavily as I try to calm my fast beating heart. I can also hear Roderick's breathing heavily on the other side of the field. Ooh. Lifting my head a little, I can see his back on full display. And a massive scar on it. It has the shape of an X, and it looks like a mark made by hot metal. I should know. I've seen countless of, I've seen countless of cows marked just like that. Besides, no sword, would, no sword wound looks that clean. But why would someone do that to him? And how? I mean, it's not really my problem, but I should stay. The, and I should stay away from this wolf, as he's not the most approachable guy. But I'm so curious, though. Leave him alone. After pondering for a few seconds, I come to the conclusion that it's not really worth it. I wouldn't even know how to start a conversation with the knight, so with that in mind, I stand up from the dirt, clean myself up as best I can, and then grab my shirt from the, gra from the ground. Pulling my shirt on, I walk to the end of the backyard, reaching out the, reaching out the hallway from where I came. Oh, hello there. Standing by the entrance of it, there's a very large-looking maid. She's definitely the tallest woman that I've ever seen, and one of the sexiest for sure, as she keeps her curves, her curvy and feminine frame. I mean, my boat may not be directed that way, but I do know how to appreciate beauty when I see it. Her eyes are emotionless and are currently looking into the distance, but when she notices me, her red orbs turn towards me. She gets closer to the point where I can properly notice the height difference between us. She's one head taller than me, if not more. Good evening, Master Eli. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. A tall woman gracefully bows in front of me, making me feel a little embarrassed. Maybe I should go back and speak to Roderick a little bit, just to see what he's got to say. Uh, well, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Hopefully I won't die. Actually, let's, uh, let's talk to him. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I won't die. So with that in mind, despite my better judgment, I decide to stand up from the dirt, clean up a little, and then walk towards the bench he's sitting at. Once I reach it, I take the spot to his left. He lifts his gaze towards me, probably wondering what the heck I'm doing. I don't say a word, giving him the chance to give the first step. What are you still doing here, runt? I told you, you can leave. Y yeah I know, I'm just catching my breath. His eyes lock with mine for a second. Yeah, as red as I remember. He soon loses interest, though, looking away. Suit yourself. An awkward silence soon ensues. The big wolf keeps on checking his checking this ring of his. His expression seems lonely, and some could even call it sad. He doesn't even bat an eye on me, which proves that this was a dumb idea. 
as I don't even have, as I don't even know how to start a conversation with him. I sigh deeply, standing up from my spot and then turning around, ready to leave him alone. But as I'm about to leave, he coughs, dragging my attention back to him. Today's training was okay. You're not as useless as you look, so expect the same tomorrow. Yeah. Well, wait, is he actually complimenting me? Um, thanks? That's all I managed to say, as I wasn't expecting him of all people to say something nice. Well, somewhat nice. He still insulted me somehow. Roger like that. Okay. He doesn't respond afterwards, though. He's clearly done with the conversation, so I take it as my cue to leave. Putting on my shirt, I walked into the backyard, reaching out the hallway from where I came. Oh, okay. Alright, so yeah, okay, I, did, I didn't... Okay, so I, nothing got skipped. Awesome. All right, mommy maid. The tallest woman, the tall woman gracefully bows in front of me, making me feel a little embarrassed. No, no one has ever called me master while being serious. Just that one time with... Uh, never mind. It's a pleasure to meet you, um... Ruby, sir, that is my name. Right. Ruby, uh, nice to meet you. I wait for her to say anything else, but she just looks at me, her eyes examining me as if it was a weird specimen. Not the first one to do that in this castle. Um, need something, Ruby? She stops her scanning, her eyes landing on mine. Crap, why is she making me so nervous all of a sudden? Yes, Master Eli, my apologies. I should introduce myself first. I'm one of the princess's personal servants. She asked me to let you know that she will be waiting for you by the garden after the sunset. Huh. So the princess herself wants to meet me. I mean, yeah, sure, I wasn't doing anything anyway. I'll be there. Perfect, then. She'll be pleased with your answer. Just one thing, Sir Eli. The princess hates to wait, so make sure to be here on to be here in time. Did I make myself clear, sir? As she says that, her presence suddenly becomes heavy and suffocating. Is this some sort of spell? I've never felt anything like this before. My legs are trembling and I can't control the urge to run away. Yes, ma'am. As soon as I say those words, the ambience returns to normal. I don't feel heavy, and my mind doesn't think my life is in danger anymore. And maybe I should ask a callus about this later. I would recommend you take care of yourself before the me before meeting the princess. You stink, sir. With that said, she leaves my si she leaves my side. I still don't understand what really happened, but I better hurry. I wouldn't want to make the princess angry. And also, note to myself: do not get on her bad side. My legs are killing me, but somehow I managed to reach the hall to my room again. I should really hurry, I don't want to be late. Don't know what that maid would do to me if I am. Help, sir. I hear a mumbled sound, but it's so faint that I can hardly notice it. I focus as best I can, trying to sense if there's someone around here. But nothing. How odd, I, I could swear I heard a voice. It must be my imagination. Sir? There it is again! What is this voice? A, a ghost? <laughs> I turn around multiple times, desperately trying to find the source of the voice. Mr. Biscotti told me many stories of ghosts that haunt the castles of the nobles. Most of them are vengeful spirits that have some sort of unfinished business with the owner of the castle. Besides, I'm on the top of a tower separated from the rest of the castle. It's the perfect scenario for a ghost to be roaming around. Who are you? I just got here. Please leave me alone. I can feel the fur on the fur on my neck. I can feel the fur on my neck tense up. If there's a presence here with me. It is a very faint one. What do you, Sir e Sir Eli? By the goddesses! <laughs> I fall right on my ass as my legs trip on one another. I look up and I can finally see the ghost. It has taken the form of a butler. Hey, please, I beg you, I'm not the one you're searching for. I swear. Oh my! Oh heavens! I'm very sorry, Master Eli. The little guy crouches beside me with his tiny hands. He with his tiny hands as he tries to lift me up. Upon closer inspection, he doesn't look like a ghost at all. Besides, he's touching me, which is weird, as ghosts have no bodies. How the hell did he do that? He came out of nowhere. I'm so very sorry, Master. This is all my fault. The guy seems to be a dog, more specifically a golden retriever. One of the tiny ones, though, as most golden retrievers I've seen are quite tall. Who are you? Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, sorry. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Ironically, the guy is trembling like crazy, and he wasn't the one scared to death. I sigh. If we want to get anywhere, I need to calm. I need him to calm down. So I place my hands on his shoulders, trying to act calming. Hey, hey, it's okay, buddy. No harm done. Please, who are you? 
It takes him a while to calm down, but eventually he stops trembling. My name is, um, Zack, sir. Uh, nice to meet you, Zack. Tell me, why are you here? The little guy is fidgeting as he looks away. He hasn't met my eye even once, and he seems really nervous to be around me. I am uh, a butler in training, sir. His Majesty has um, assigned me to you, meaning I'll be your personal assistant from now on. So, it's a pleasure to meet you, Master. Please forgive my ineptitude. He bows in front of me, making me worry for his back as he bent a little too far. It's very good to meet you, Zack. Please, calm down. It's okay. The little dog seems to be a little more relaxed. Gee, for a moment there, I thought he would have had a heart attack. The poor fellow wa is a walking sack of nerves. Ah, uh, sir, I almost forgot. You must take a bath. Excuse me? Huh. This guy might be bolder than I thought. What a way to tell me that I smell. I mean, it's not that bad, is it? I take a quick whiff to my, to my pit. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh, no, uh, please don't be offended, Master. Uh, you have an appointment with the princess, right? Ah, shit, I almost forgot about that. I should really be getting ready for that. I facepalm myself, as I can't believe this horrible memory of mine. Sir, I already read you a bath. Please, through this door. He points towards one of the three doors in the, in the hallway. I was actually wondering what these were. Huh, lucky me. Seems like I'll have my own personal bathroom. I'll be right here if you need anything. Please, hurry. I follow his instructions and try to take the, da try to take the damn bath as fast as possible. I really don't want to anger that maid. I rushed through that bath as fast as I could. I got in and out in a minute, washing up as best as I could while making myself decent for the meeting. The bathtub was really big and comfortable, but sadly, I didn't get to enjoy it much. Oh, hello there. Anyways, now I finally reached the courtyard again. There I see the maid waiting by a three, waiting by a three, and a girl with his back, and a girl with her back to me. So I can't really see her face. I walk slowly towards them, not wanting to sweat my clothes all over again. The sun has set fully by now, and the stars begin to shine bright up in the sky. There's some fireflies flying around in the bushes and in the grass, giving the environment a certain mystical aura. I have a feeling she's like a fucking battle maid or something. Ruby is gracefully standing still under the tree. Meanwhile, the princess is just humming a song as she looks up to the sky. She stops as soon as she notices my presence. You're late. I try to greet her, but she interrupts me before I can properly say a thing. She then turns around, and now I can properly see her. My first thought was intense. Everything about her gives me that feeling. From her red hair to her red eyes, and her expression, and her whole body language. All about this girl is screaming danger to me. This isn't like what Ruby said. This isn't like what Ruby did. I don't feel like running. But for some reason, I just know I need to be careful around her. Is that him, Ruby? She lifts her chin. A clear sign that she thinks herself superior from me. Indeed, my lady. This is Master Eli, your grandparent's new retainer. Goddesses, he did it again. And I thought one peasant was more than enough. Yeah, this is exactly what well, this is the exact way I imagined a royal to be. Elitist, self centered, and rude. You, where do you hail from? It takes me a while to notice that she's talking to me, so far that so far she's acted as if I wasn't even there. I'm a citizen of Yagnir, my lady. Hmm. I will never understand why Grandpa sees in you. All of his retainers are nothing but misfits. She must be speaking of a callous Roderick and Allman. I wonder what she means. To me, those guys look fairly normal. Or somewhat normal. In here, I thought he would finally bring a noble to the island. I've been so bored. She sighs deeply, placing one of her fingers on her forehead. Meanwhile, Ruby just rubs her back, consoling her apparently. Oh, I'm sorry I'm not what you were expecting, my lady. I must take my leave, then. Her expression suddenly changes, turning a lot more aggressive than before. Yep, that is possible. How dare you! You can excuse yourself before I say so! Don't you have any manners? She walks closer to me and slaps my cheek. I wake a few times, not sure what the heck just happened. No, wait, I do know what happened. She's crazy! Well, it doesn't matter, you'll have to do. Sir Eli, answer my answer this question. Do you know how to play Save the Queen? Does she mean the kids game? Gee, that makes me wonder how old this girl is. No, wait. If what the king said is right, she is older she is older than me. Yes, I do know how to play. Good. Then you'll suffice. You're better than the servants, as they always let me win. Sorry, what? You will play with me when you're done with your training. Shit. Not another compromise. I have enough on my plate as it is. My princess, you honor me. 
But I'm sure there must be someone better qualified than me. I say, trying to find a way out of this. There is no one on this island. So as long as you're my only option, you shall play with me. Ah, yes, I would love to, but um, if I may, how about a callus? He's way smarter than me. I bet he'll be a be better challenger. No, he won't do. He bores me to no end, and his face is lame. She stubbornly says, not trying to hide the fact that she just likes the wolf. Uh, how about Almond, then? I'm sure he would be thrilled to play with your majesty. No, he's always trying to hide something, and I don't trust him. She turns her head to the side, crossing her arms, making me sigh. And what about Sir Roderick? I'm sure that a captain would be a very good player. After all, the game is a war strategy game. The game is a war strategy game, is it not? No, Roderick is no good either. He would let me win, as he always does. Seems to me there is no way out of this. I'll be forced to play with her no matter what I do. So I just sigh and decide to comply. All right, then. I shall play with you, my lady. May I excuse myself now? Yes, you may. I'll be sending Ruby for you tomorrow, same as today. Don't be late again. I'm certain her loud screams have been heard from all over the castle. How does Ruby put up with her? Then I'll see you later, my princess. She offers me her hand and stays quiet. I tilt my head unsure of what to do. Go on, kiss my hand, Eli. Do you really know nothing of manners? Oh yes, my apologies. I lean forward, giving her hand a soft kiss. I managed to catch the scent of roses, meaning that she probably took a bath recently. Does that mean that she prepared herself for this meeting? Off you go, then. I respond. I respond nothing to that. All I do is bow lightly, trying not to get slapped again. Oh boy. I enter my room after the longest day of my life. I flop onto the bed. My whole body is aching for some rest, and I'm giving, I'm giving to it what I'm giving to it what it wants. Oddly enough, this room feels like a safe haven where I won't be bothered any longer. The only place I can call my own in this goddess-forsaken island. Gee, today was longer. And it was a longer day than I was expecting. Acalus's class was quite interesting. I learned a lot of I learned a lot of things from him. I got to know him a little better while doing so, which is great, I guess. And the whole magic explanation was wonderful. I would have never thought people could do such a wonderful things. But still, there are so many things that can be done wrong, too. The fire gives me too many bad memories. Still, he's the Grand Master of the Library. That's really impressive. No wonder he's so serious all the time. But I know there was something else in there. After all, he tried to explain everything to me as best as he could. And he's kind, on his own weird way. Talking about kind, Almond really is something else. The guy is a complete mystery, always acting nice and dandy, but I never felt like he was honest with me. He avoided my questions, and he didn't even teach me a thing. He just said he wanted to know me, but why? Besides, there's the fact that he tried to grope me today. What was his deal, hitting on me like that out in the open? Such a pervert. I think it's better if I don't give him much thought. I just need to pay real close attention to him. Maybe that way I'll figure out what his deal is. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Ooh, we got some sexy images today. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye